All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Wednesday, May 5th, 2021, special meeting of the Richmond School Board. Uh, if everyone would please stand to pledge allegiance. Superintendent's contract for Dr. Wright. If I could entertain a motion. So moved. Motion by Aaron Stevens. Second. Second. Second by, second by Nicole Stoltz. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes 7-0. Congratulations. With that, it is my distinct honor to introduce our new superintendent for Richmond Community Schools, Dr. Curtis Wright. Dr. Wright, I'd like to have you go to the podium and share some words, if you would. Forgive me, I will remove the mask. I think CDC standards were uh, 15 feet in distance and minutes and what have you. Nevertheless, good evening to each and every one of you. I do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to come by and uh, bear witness to this uh, historic event, historic day. I had a speech prepared, but as my mother used to say, uh, speak from the heart. And uh, now that I'm back home, hearing Curdy and Curdy and Curdy even more, I definitely had to put the speech away. Uh, it was uh, rather, rather plastic and I mean, it, it was meaningful. But uh, I've also been encouraged to keep things brief as an old history teacher. And Mr. Lee can attest, as I was a student teacher there at RHS when he was a first year teacher, uh, as, as history teachers, we can, we can tell some stories. And sometimes we lose track of time. However, of the stories that I just wish to share uh, and, and uh, nostalgic, memories that I have, uh, I will say that it is great to be home. I had told uh, many folks for years that I would be returning. Uh, no one believed me. And of where I am currently and where I've been, uh, although it's been positive and I've been truly uh, blessed and it's been fortunate for the past nearly two decades there in Marion County, City of Indianapolis, school systems. Uh, I spent nearly 10 years at Ben Davis High School, another 10 years uh, there in, in the Pike community, um, which mirror and mimic uh, the Rose City, but it's not home. And so now that I'm back, we definitely will continue the important work and exercising goodwill, uh, just as Mrs. O'Brien, our cabinet, our amazing board. Uh, I think we all owe them so much gratitude and uh, for, for what they've done in a pandemic historic year. Uh, is unprecedented, and I know that that's a term that we all are ready to forget that in the masks and what have you, but to think that they, that the Richmond Community School System has not had a permanent superintendent in place. Mrs. O'Brien coming in with fearless leadership, the cabinet standing behind and with, and then ultimately the courage of the school board to make something as such happen. Uh, again, I think they, they are uh, definitely afforded uh, at the very least, a round of applause. So I appreciate you all, I thank you. <laughs> to think that, uh, again, we all are uh, back together, uh, as I mentioned, to, to exercise goodwill and, and do good work, uh, I simply will ask and be reaching out to so many to help carry the bag, uh, because as we know, it's heavy. Uh, right now, we definitely are being tried in so many more ways than ever before and the bag that we all collectively have to carry um, should continue to unify us around the simple fact that we're all Red Devils. No matter where you may lie politically, no matter where you are, age, or even class, the binding force that we all have is the color red 
and Richmond. And this is, again, the Rose City. And so I had mentioned, uh, and I told myself that I wouldn't get emotional, and so I'm working very hard not to. And it's probably a good thing I did put the speech away because I would have by now been uh, very tearful, especially with uh, the like of, of uh, my Hibbert Middle School influence, C.R. Richardson influence, Mrs. Moss was there, our librarian, and then so many others throughout RHCS, uh, RHS, and just the, uh, the simple uh, community. Um, it's, it's been remarkable um, when you think that Helena Pennington and Mrs. Mitchell spent four and a half years with me at C.R. Richardson, helping me learn how to read and write and do simple ciphering or mathematics. Um, going into middle school, having a huge shadow in front of me uh, with my older sister, my older brother, other family members. Uh, as a middle child, uh, does it sound like I'm complaining? Uh, I'm just stating facts. It was difficult, but with the support of so many folks, um, it's possible. And, and it's, it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm tickled to death, uh, still pinching myself from time to time, but at the same time, I do know that uh, we have a very important work in front of us, faculty, staff, students, uh, stakeholders, uh, all need to be served to the utmost selflessly. I've mentioned uh, Mrs. O'Brien, uh, Mrs. Hazel Baker, uh, members of the board and others. Uh, we toured the district earlier today and just the sheer level of love, support, care, and, um, and committed concern uh, was on the faces of everyone we met. And again, I, I can't thank you enough uh, as a board for having the courage, having the leadership and the um, resiliency to press through, press forward. Again, with Mrs. O'Brien, the cabinet, faculty and staff, the students, um, collectively we all will adapt, adjust, overcome our adversities, we'll, uh, we'll maintain a sense of focus, and more importantly, continue to push our school district in the direction that uh, it need all be. And so uh, with that said, I, uh, again, uh, excited, humbled, extremely humbled, uh, and most importantly, uh, anxious to, to truly get it, to get it started and get it going. And I had better uh, go ahead and return to my seat because my uncle just walked in who convinced me to go to Earlham. And uh, as a result of that conversation I had with him, I'm before you are now. So thank you. I'm glad to be home, and uh, as I said, I'll see you in the Gorge, uh, Main Street, uh, Glen Miller Park, uh, getting some of that good spring water, uh, or just uh, around some of the local uh, parks and, and recreation. So um, I'm home, uh, my wonderful wife Tiffany, our beautiful children, uh, family, uh, who you'll meet. Um, we have a, a great thing going. We wanna maintain that momentum, continue to keep the positive synergy, and uh, more importantly, uh, with our board, uh, we're going to do some fine things. So, again, thank you. Uh, I am going to cut it off there, but, again, it's great to be home. Love each and every one of you, and uh, so appreciative. So appreciative. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wright. Um, with that, at this time, uh, if you'll join me uh, lower stage, uh, we have a first of two special presentations. We have, we have. <laughs> so good evening to all of you. And I want to thank the board and our central office administrators for having us here this evening. And especially to the board for an outstanding choice in our new hire. You couldn't have picked better. Thank you for hiring Dr. Wright. And Dr. Wright, welcome back to Richmond to you and your beautiful family. My name is Tammy Rhodes and I was Dr. Wright's eighth grade humanities teacher at Hibbard Middle School. We often refer to our time at Hibbard as Camelot. It was a time and place of academic excellence, a lot of happiness, and we had fun. 
kids had fun learning, we had fun going to school. As educators, we were very, very fortunate to have students like Dr. Wright and Tiffany Travis. They made coming to school every day a great pleasure. They were knowledge driven and they were admired by their peers and by the staff. There are so many positive words to describe Dr. Wright that I cannot even begin to include them all. He was very impressive as a student. He never gave up. He encourages his peers to strive for excellence and he worked exceptionally hard. Dr. Wright was, was committed to doing his very, very best with a first class attitude. We always found Dr. Wright to be outstanding and knew that this day would come. However, I always thought we would be standing here introducing you as mayor. The mayor of Richmond is what I expected. So I am surprised and thrilled and happy and couldn't be more pleased. So Dr. Wright and to his family, welcome back to this wonderful city we call home. Dr. Wright learned from the best. We have two individuals here tonight to speak to you. Our former principal of Kamini, Dr. Leithart, and, and wife, our former principal and former RCS board member, Dixie Robinson. Dr. Weishart was Dr. Wright's um, seventh and eighth grade teacher, if I'm remembering correctly, and also his professor at Earlham College. Dr. Weishart. Well, it's my pleasure to be part of this presentation for Dr. Wright. I've got to call you Curdy at some point, though, sorry. <laughs> I, resent, I represent a number of his former teachers today who are so proud that as a former student, he's coming home to lead Richmond Community Schools. Uh, like Tammy said, I've known uh, Curtis Wright since he was in seventh grade at Hibbard Middle School. And even then, I could see in him and his brothers the Wright family influence. I worked with three of the Wright brothers as a teacher, a coach, or both. And it was clear that all three of them exemplified similar family characteristics a respect for all persons, a commitment to being the best student and person he could be, and a commitment to helping a team or group reach their top potential. I had the privilege of working with Curdy, Dr. Wright, when he was in seventh grade, eighth grade, and then again at Earlham. If I remember correctly, you and Jamar were both in that education class, two Wright brothers together at the same time in the same place. Um, that was, Interesting. Um, there are a lot of stories I could tell, but we'll save those for later. But, but what came through in all the, the experiences I had with, with Dr. Wright, with Curtis Wright, um, are these qualities I already mentioned. Um, respect for persons, get the most out of your education, work hard, and have fun doing so. And help any group or team you're part of achieve their goal. And I feel certain that we're gonna see all those positive qualities and more in the coming years. But now, Dixie has a presentation to make. Well, I'm sorry, but here at home, you're Curdy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I would like to tell all of you, I was Curdy's principal at Hibbard, and I want to tell you how this came to be with Curdy Wright becoming the RHS superintendent. In January of 1993, you were 13 years old and an eighth grader. And the staff and I decided it would be really fun to have a switch day at Hibbard. This meant we allowed the kids to take over the school. So, we had, some were secretaries, some were custodians, some were cafeteria workers, some were counselors, and many taught classes that day, including his younger brother, Jamar. He taught math, and he was mean to those kids. <laughs> and Curdy was the principal of the day. Well, he had a staff meeting the afternoon before the big day with his new crew. He came in the next day in his shirt and tie 
and he greeted students and parents as they arrived at school. He gave the morning announcements. He then went around the building and made sure that all the classes were running smoothly. Then the discipline issues started. <laughs> the real superintendent of schools, Dr. Golars, called and talked to him. School board members dropped in and out all day. School board members um, were asking him a lot of questions and wanting tours. He then went to supervise lunch and I told him to take a break and get some lunch. He said he didn't have time. So the State Board of Education called because they, had, uh, they knew what we were doing and they said this was a first in Indiana. So then his dad dropped by to see how he was doing. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. Curtis said, Dad, will you step into my office? <laughs> so, and Mrs. Reister and I were outside in the hallway laughing so hard. It was unbelievable. So, then you went out. These are my papers. Um, at the end of the day, after he had done bus supervision, the Palladium item interviewed Curdy, and this is what he said about being principal, and I quote. <laughs> I was 13. <laughs> I don't want to be principal again. I thought about it and all those meetings they have to do and attend meetings and solve problems with them starting in the morning and going late in the night. I couldn't take it. <laughs> so on behalf of your old Hibbert staff, we have framed that article and quote for your new office here in Richmond. So you will always remember where you got your start, even though you didn't know it at the time, but it was a seed planted in that head of yours. And now here you are, the superintendent of Richmond Community Schools. Congratulations from your middle school teachers and principal at Hibbard. We wish you much success. So there you are. Wow. Hit the, uh, the hit. I know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mrs. Robinson, Ms. Rose, Mr. Weishart. If we can give them another round of applause, this is uh, rather remarkable. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, what's ironic about uh, the story, and as they mentioned, and as I've shared, as educators, uh, I believe that we are in a profession that has the ability to truly well, continue to be uh, so influential within all things society. You look at the home front, you look at the neighborhood, you look at our uh, religious sector, and it's not what it once was. However, with education, it remains consistent. It remains constant. And so as educators, you never know where that influence is going to uh, end. You never know where it will continue. And so what's ironic is, is that uh, things came full circle when we toured Hibbert Middle School earlier uh, this afternoon. Because in that same office with Mrs. Etherington, she and I took a picture with the picture of me on that day from Hibbert Middle School that I've shared for the past 20 years of my teaching career and, and, and administrative career. Because as you mentioned, this is indeed where it started. And Mr. Weishart uh, introduced me to uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X, uh, JFK's 30th um, anniversary uh, of the, the assassination, MLK's 25th, um, and just embedded within me uh, a passion for learning. And uh, I've also shared uh, Mr. Weishart 
as a senior in 97, uh, the graduation gift he gave me. Uh, and it was heavy, and I'm thinking, oh, Mr. Wise, are okay? Hibbert coming through. I got home and opened it up, and it was a dictionary. And I'm thinking, oh, such a lame gift as a uh, senior uh, in high school. But as, it written, as it's written within the book, uh, this will become the most important book that you'll study within your first few semesters there at Orlam. And again, I, I owe so much to so many. But that book, I did indeed keep my head in, uh, understood and built upon Mrs. Pennington and Mrs. Mitchell, uh, their, their tutelage uh, at, at, at CR. And when my brain unlocked, when I was finally understand, able to understand the terms and the vocabulary that was used, um, I haven't stopped having a, a thirst for learning. And so again, I, I can't thank you all enough. You know, what's ironic and, and amazing is that I think the Logos program is now housed there at Hibbert. And for years, and I know some that may have gone to Dennis and Test and others that uh, were our rivals, uh, we always had a bias that uh, things there at Hibbert on the South End were. But the beauty is, is that we all came together there at Richmond High School. And we all uh, eventually become Red Devils. And so I thank you so very much uh, from the bottom of my heart for the influence that you all uh, have had, the impact of family, friends, and the extended community. Um, I've said time and again, and our board has heard, and I'll sound like that of a repeated, uh, a broken record, but uh, it does indeed take a village to raise a child. However, as they've heard and as I've said, there's a second stanza that oftentimes is not mentioned, and that is that a child not embraced by that same village will burn it down to fill its warmth. And so when you look at what's transpiring, not only here in the Rose City, and for those that may not have ever heard Richmond uh, referenced as the Rose City, we are the city of roses. But as it's happening here in Richmond, as well as happening across the country, uh, we're on fire. And so collectively, if we definitely drop any and all differences, as Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois used to argue, cast down our buckets, come together as, as Richmond Red Devils, then so much can be accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit and everyone's willing to put their hard hat on, strap up your bootstraps, recognize and realize that, again, we are proud people, we are Richmond, uh, and again, together, like I said, we'll, we'll get it done. Uh, Mrs. Robinson, I, I uh, and again, of this picture, what's remarkable is that you didn't have a telephone or a computer on your desk, uh, but you still got it done. Um, and you still don't use this. All in all, uh, the bag is heavy. I'm just going to uh, lean on everyone to help carry it. I see Mr. Cross is here. Uh, I had the fortune to go to school with uh, his daughter Whitney there at Hibbert and also graduate in 97 together. And uh, when push comes to shove, I, I don't necessarily care what you call me as long as you all answer the phone when I call. And that goes for everybody in the community because I will be leaning and pressing upon everyone um, to come in collectively and, and pitch in and contribute. Like I said, we are proud people. We have a special thing still here in Richmond. We just need to continue to cultivate it, build upon it, and move forward. Um, or, uh, for lack of better words, as they used to say on the east side, and I'm not sure if they still say it, uh, this experience is going to be an all skate. For some of you all that remember the skating rink uh, there on the east side of town. And when we heard that, everyone knew it was time to pitch in and jump in and have some fun. So we'll have fun. We'll work hard. We'll adapt, adjust, overcome. We'll be the best people we can be, the best scholars we can be, and ultimately in the end, we'll be the best Red Devils we can be. So thank you again. Thank you so much. Warm and welcoming. I will be hanging that up in my office. Yes, thank you. Our, our next uh, special presentation is uh, for uh, this is Suzanne Derengowski. Um, uh, Suzanne and her husband are relocating uh, to Indianapolis area, and uh, this will be her last board meeting. And I'd like to recognize her 20 years of board service to Richmond Community Schools. Uh, Suzanne's been an important part, even in her last few months, with our superintendent search, uh, her institutional knowledge and support, and sage, wise advice has been uh, beyond. Uh, and we couldn't have asked for a better board member. So uh, with that, I have a plaque for her.
that uh, and Suzanne did not want to have us recognize her tonight, um, but this is her last meeting, and and she has been, I mean, she's 20 years on this board has been tremendous. Uh, and so I, I'm very appreciative, and I wish her the absolute best in her future endeavors. Thank you. I didn't want to uh, take the spotlight from Dr. Wright at all, but um, every board I've worked with, I've been so proud to serve this community um, for all these years. Um, every board I've worked with has had students first in mind uh, as we make our decisions. Some of the decisions have been super easy, like full day kindergarten for all and preschool, and some have been really hard. Um, every time we had to close a building, um, they were difficult. Um, but we've also been extremely fiscally responsible, and those building closures have allowed us to not get rid of programs that are most important and keep the dollars with the students and the teachers in the classrooms. So I'm proud of those as well. Um, some of the decisions didn't work out so well, like dress code. <laughs> but um, it's also another uh, example of making decisions that are the best at the time with the information you have. And sometimes they don't work out, and so you make a different one. And we ask the teachers and the students to do that every day. So it happens to us, too. Um, I've also am very, very proud to have met so many wonderful people. A lot of you are here and here, um, including in classrooms and boardrooms and buses, and including a kid named Curdy, a um, long time ago, who played a little basketball. And um, it's been pretty exciting to have this decision be the last one before I leave. So thank you all for everything. I appreciate it. concluding my 24th year as a member of this board, and I can count all the board members that I've had the opportunity to serve with during this time, Dixie Robinson, uh, and some of the others. I've seen outstanding board members who, who have been my mentors when I was coming to Richmond High School, even athletic directors and my favorite teacher, Dixie. <clears throat> I've seen those that we have lost during that time as well. In the midst of the time served since 1921, excuse me, since 1921, <laughs> since 2001, and during the time of resources results and even up to now, there has been a constant, and that has been Suzanne Derengalski, who then joined the board and has been a constant over these last number of years with the decisions that we have made. She has been a spearhead and a vanguard with so many of the difficult times that we have had and she's been a voice of reason throughout that time. And within my heart, I know that every cast vote that she made at our board settings, it was always first about what is best for every one of our students and every one of our families. She has gone above and beyond in so many ways to ensure that as a board and as a corporation that we have been extremely successful. And it has been my great honor and pleasure to have served with her over these many years, seated next to her sometimes and seated across the table from her many times, but always knowing that from the bottom of her heart, she represented Richmond Community Schools with every vote that she cast because it was what was best for all of us. So from my heart, I say thank you, girl, and I'm certainly going to miss you. Well, I don't often admit that I'm wrong, but I have to admit tonight, for the first time publicly, that I was wrong. Suzanne knows what I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, I was on the board in 2002, um, 
when Suzanne was uh, voted on by the board, she was a replacement for a board member that had uh, passed away. And I was one of six members that was voting on whether we wanted her to be the next school board member or not. Well, me and my stubborn ways, um, I actually voted no. And, and I have never forgotten it. And it's the, probably the only vote that I've ever regretted the whole entire time I've been on the board. She's been a rock star. Um, part of my family. Well, thank you, Suzanne. I can't add much else. Um, know that your work was with purpose and well done. Uh, with that, I would like to invite everyone to join us in the lobby for uh, to welcome Dr. Wright. And I call this meeting adjourned.